Hello, New Hope. Pastor Senior here with um, with our Wednesday night word, and uh, and tonight we're going to talk about uh, navigating uh, loneliness, navigating the pitfalls of loneliness. Uh, <clears throat> our text tonight is taken from Ecclesiastes chapter four, um, uh, and we'll look at verses nine through twelve, but especially ver- the, the B part of verse ten. Two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm. But how can one be warm alone? person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. And again, this be the B part of verse 10. Woe to him who is alone for when he falls. Um, woe to him who is alone when he falls for he has no one to help him up. And so uh, when we when we talk about um, uh, loneliness, it is it is really something that uh, is particularly acute during the holiday seasons for a lot of people. Uh, But loneliness is something that uh, that many of us uh, deal with year round. Um, In fact, there are millions of people uh, all over the country. Um, that daily uh, wrestle with the sense of isolation and and disconnect, emotional and physical disconnect from other people. And um, and one of the things that the scripture warns us about is being alone to face life's problems. Um, that it is it is not uh, advisable to face life's problems uh, on our own. And it's important that we recognize the remedies that God has left at our disposal uh, for loneliness. And, uh, and again, <clears throat> though we all at various times grapple with loneliness, uh, sometimes there are particular seasons where, alone, where loneliness can be particularly, uh, where we can be particularly um, vulnerable uh, to feelings of isolation and uh, an emotional disconnect from other people. And so uh, just just pastorally speaking, as I think about some of uh, the, the seasons that um, that I've had to walk people or had the privilege of walking people through uh, include just see, just seasons of, of singleness and you know wanting to be uh, to be married or wanting to be, uh, in a covenant uh, committed relationship, uh, wanting somebody uh, to cook uh, to cook for, uh, or wanting somebody to Netflix and chill with, and uh, just makes me think about that scene from Coming to America um, when uh, Eddie Murphy is uh, singing "To Be Loved, To Be Loved, What a Feeling to Be Loved," right? Um, you know, and and so for for some for some. Um, uh, that this is a particularly uh, um, stressful time of the year just because of that sense of emotional longing and um, and, the, and the desire for um, a, a romantic connection uh, but then but then also uh, you know some some say, some people say single and lonely uh, married and miserable uh, <clears throat> sometimes you have people that are that are in committed relationships but still feel alone, um, you know, and, 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 and it, it, you know, and, and anyone can uh, be subject to this, right? Uh, I, I know people that uh, can say, you know, pastor, we you know, we both do well financially. We both love the Lord. Um, you know, he or she is, you know, they're good. They're good. They're a good person. Um, but I just know that my emotional needs are not being met, and there's a disconnect. And um, and even though we're together, uh, I still feel like I'm by myself. 
And then you have uh, you have folks that are navigating uh, seasons of great loss. Uh, like there's some there's some people that we lose in life that you you just never get over the loss of, of those folks. You get through it. Right. But you don't get over it. And um, and and so there's that the loneliness of um, of being the survivor, being the one that's left uh, behind. Um, and then another season, uh, you know, where loneliness can be particularly acute is um, is when you get into your older seasons. Uh, when, um, you know, one of the things when I when I talk to uh, some of our senior and our elderly members, you know, where um, they have now sort of transitioned out of seasons in their life when they had a lot of authority, maybe prominence. And um, and now um wondering if anyone still needs them or respects them. Um, and so <clears throat> that, is, that, that is a population uh, of, of folks in our community that are particularly vulnerable uh, to feelings of loneliness. And then, um, you know, another group of folks that, uh, that I talk to that, that frequently express uh, um, just issues with, with loneliness are uh, people that are in service industries, uh, whether it is uh, human services or the, the medical field, or, or folks that work in ministry. Uh, the you know, serving and meeting the needs of others can be a sometimes very very lonely pursuit, uh, where you can uh, have feelings of again deep isolation. Uh, feeling misunderstood um, and um, and sometimes you know just unappreciated and unseen. And I want to just say this: I think it's important. Like there are certain things that happen in our community that are allowed to have undue power over us because of our unwillingness to call those things by name. Uh, there, there is there are things in our in our community that I think we desperately need to normalize. And one of the things that I think it's important for us to normalize is conversations around loneliness. Uh, having feelings of loneliness does not make you uh, somehow less spiritual uh, than someone else. It doesn't mean that you don't know your Bible um, or that somehow you are lacking you know, uh, in God's good grace. Uh, but it's important uh, for us, even as we're having these conversations, to just say up front that loneliness is something uh, that can afflict anyone, uh, you know, regardless as to the, the, your, the, the, to the degree of biblical knowledge you possess or uh, your spiritual, you know, level of spiritual maturity, and um, and um, uh, and even even you know when you are. are Maybe say say a skilled uh, uh, clinician or a skilled minister. Uh, even having a wealth of knowledge about, uh, you know, how some of these things work, can st- it still does not inoculate you ag- against, you know, you know, perhaps being uh, hit with a wave of just feeling, uh, just kind of like I'm out here by myself. I'm unseen, you know, unheard, and and I'm disconnected, and um, and it's important, <clears throat> man. Um, you know, one of the ways that I think that we can normalize uh, these conversations, especially in in, and I'll just say this tonight, in spiritual circles, you know, Christian circles, is number one to just acknowledge the fact that it is a common theme in Scripture, uh, that you have some of the best and brightest uh, biblical heroes. Uh, that express uh, serious issues with loneliness. Uh, I have a couple uh, here in front of me tonight, but uh, King David, man after God's own heart. Uh, but you know, you can read. You know, when you you know, if you if you are at all familiar with any of David's story, and you read and you read some of the uh, Psalms that he wrote uh, in the Book of Psalms, uh, loneliness is a frequent um, a frequent topic. You know, I'll give you one snippet from the 102nd Psalm, uh, verses 6 and 7. David says, I'm like an owl in the desert, like a little owl in a far-off wilderness. 
uh, verse seven, I lie awake lonely as a solitary bird on the roof. Um, or when you think about the prophet Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah wrote an entire book in the Old Testament that is just the, the book of Lamentations. That is a book that basically is, uh, you know, talking about uh, the degrees of loneliness that he feels as he watch, watches um, an entire generation of uh, Hebrews go into captivity. Uh, the Apostle Paul, um, again, someone who wrote, uh, a, 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 you know, two thirds of the New Testament, uh, but uh, and who is ex extremely skilled, uh, very uh, mature believer, uh, but expresses at the latter stages of his ministry, um, you know, feelings of of, of, of loneliness and abandonment. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, uh, verse 10, uh, he just talks about some of the people that have uh, that have for, have abandoned him. Demas has forsaken me. Uh, Cretans has left, uh, left for Galatia. Titus for Dalmatia. Uh, at my defense, uh, verse 16, no one stood with me. All forsook me. I mean, um, you know, so is it is it sin? Is it sin or is it wrong? To have feelings of loneliness, no, no, and I think it's important that that um, that we uh, that we demystify that, um, that we dispel uh, that erroneous notion, and, um, and 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 normalize conversations around loneliness. Now, <clears throat> with that being said, I want to suggest. Uh, some some ways that the scriptures um, suggest some some particular some potential avenues that we might travel in order to escape loneliness based on the scriptures, because listen, <clears throat> you know, it's an, an, it's inevitable that there will be moments that we are alone, but loneliness at some point becomes a choice, um, and I'm going to explain. Uh, the logic behind that, but but all of us at various points um, will be alone. Uh, but to persist in this sense of, of, of emotional and physical detachment from others, um, at some point it becomes a choice. So how do we escape loneliness? Well, the first thing is uh, is to acknowledge the reality of our loneliness. Nothing um, can happen. Um, until we acknowledge that something is wrong. And so just acknowledging, you know, the reality of our loneliness. Uh, A.W. Towser, who's one of my favorite uh, theologians, if you, if, you, if you like to read, uh, he's got some really, really good books out there. Um, <clears throat> but A.W. Towser wrote, uh, some say brightly, oh, I am never lonely. Christ said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And lo, I am always with you. So how can I ever be lonely when Jesus is with me? But Towser added, Towser added, I do not want to reflect on the sincerity of any Christian soul, but this stock testimony is too neat to be real. Right? That, that, you know, any any believer that, that you know, <clears throat> um, you know, it, it, you know, and I agree with Tozer, uh, Towser. Um, any believer that says, "Like, man, I'm, I'm, nev I'm never lonely. I never have those those feelings of loneliness." You know, you know, we don't want to question uh, their authenticity or their sincerity. Uh, but I would, I would just say, just be wary of that. Uh, I, you know, I'm wary of anyone uh, that takes difficult things and tries to make them look overly easy. It's cool if you've mastered a particular area of life. Say that. Right. Just say, you know, say you've matured uh, or you've mastered, you know, you know, develop some mastery in that area. Uh, but let's not fake the funk and pretend like uh, this isn't a real issue and a real challenge for a lot of people, uh, including many people that we see in Scripture. And so, you know, so the first thing, man, is to not be in denial. If you're lonely, just admit that you are lonely. Uh, so one is acknowledge. 
then two, accept God's provision for loneliness. Um, and so when we talk about accepting God's provision for loneliness, um, you know, the, the first thing um, that, that God offers is himself. Uh, right when Jesus is on the cross and he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken, forsaken me? He was bearing our sins and, and our pain and bearing our loneliness so that the love of God uh, can fill our hearts like that. When we when we talk about the ministry of the Lord Jesus, his ministry was all about making sure that you and I have night and day access to God. That is not to over spiritualize the issue of loneliness, but it is to say that God is a very real present help in the time of trouble, uh, that God is uh, very much um, available to us, um, especially as we navigate things like isolation. And so I'll just say from, you know, just from a personal testimony, um, one of the things that uh, that I that I re- that I'm relentlessly consistent about is my my time of, of daily meeting with God, and 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 a, and a lot of that is um, because of the loneliness that can be some that's sometimes associated with doing church work. Um, this again, um, uh, sometimes you just feel uh, you can feel uh, a disconnect where. Um, uh, where the work is concerned, and in order to remain moored, uh, it is imp- it has been important for me to meet with God on an ongoing and regular basis, and um, and not just in some religious and superficial way, uh, but to meet with Him uh, to such a degree uh, that daily He affirms His presence in my life. Um, so that daily I am able uh, to affirm uh, the access that I have to him. Um, and so so that is um, so so accepting God's one of, you know, accepting God's provision for loneliness, again, includes um, embracing God himself, leaning uh, into him. Uh, another way that I accept God's provision or we accept God's provision uh, for loneliness is allowing God's word uh, to fill my mind. Um, one another way of, of saying this is just thinking about your thinking. Uh, there are sometimes these uh, negative and toxic thoughts uh, that come up, um, and, and 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 we have to be um, intentional about confronting them, especially when when you know when we're having these thoughts that drift to to extremes. Uh, it's like what one wise man said to me. Uh, usually, when you're engaging in extreme thinking, it's it's not true. And so, when we're having these thoughts like nobody cares, um, you know, no one loves me, uh, you know, I'm uh, I'm unseen, you know, all, all of these sort of extreme thoughts, um, then you know um, that something or someone is lying to you. It, it can just be. Um, your mind, your brain is, is, is not where it needs to be, or it could just be the enemy. It could be, it really could be uh, sort of demonic uh, oppression. Uh, but <clears throat> we want to think about our thinking. Now, as you're in your words, you're meditating on the word of God, you're thinking about your thinking. If, you're, if you find yourself getting stuck, uh, the third thing that I want to recognize, uh, excuse me, the, the fourth thing. Uh, that I want to recommend to you is to activate your network, right? So acknowledge, accept, allow, and then activate your network. Um, one, one of the things that the writer talks about is how when you invite other people uh, to do life with you, uh, then it just makes you safer. Like it just makes makes the journey safer. So it's like if you're if you're back to back and you get in a fight, um, you know, if you if you if you're attacked and you have someone with you, then then you're just safer. If you're in a if you're in the cold and you have someone that you can bundle up with, then you're just uh, you're just safer. Um, or if you fall to the ground or you fall in a pit, um, there's someone there that can help get you out of the pit. That when you when you travel, when you fight, um, um, when you fall. 
that it is just safer uh, when you have other people with you. And so uh, what I said to you earlier is that all of us at, at various points will be alone, but at some point loneliness becomes a choice. And, uh, and what I mean by that is when you recognize that loneliness um, has, has you in a tight grip, it's going to be so important uh, that you reach out uh, to those that are in your network and you connect with someone. It could very well be that the someone you connect with is someone like me, uh, a pastor or a minister uh, in your church. Uh, or, or a deacon, a deaconess, or someone that um, you have a relationship with in ministry, um, or, or it could be you know a good girlfriend at work, or, or, or someone that you've grown up with. Uh, but don't allow your mind to trick you, or for the enemy to trap you into thinking that that no one cares, um, or that this is just the way that life has to be. Um, you know, the other thing is. Um, you know, sometimes God can can raise up friends in your life in the most unexpected ways. Uh, and I wanted to, to share in, in closing this one particular story uh, that touched me. I've been following this story uh, for about four years. Uh, four years ago, uh, this grandmother um, sent out uh, this grandmother out in Arizona sent out a text. Uh, she thought she was texting her grandson. And, uh, and instead, she ended up texting this 17-year-old kid named Jamal Hinton. And uh, was, she thought she was texting her grandson to invite him to, uh, to Thanksgiving dinner. But instead, the text uh, accidentally went to Jamal. And when Jamal got the text, he responded, you know, I'm, I'm not your grandson, but I still love to come by and get a plate. And, um, and this grandmother, uh, uh, Lonnie, uh, excuse me, this, this grandmother, um, uh, Wanda Dench, uh, told him, well, come on over and, and get a plate. Now, <clears throat> Wanda and her husband, Lonnie, welcomed uh, Jam Jamal and his girlfriend into their home. Um, you know, they had Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, they enjoyed one another's company and became fast friends. And so... Uh, for so every year for the past four years, uh, not only have they continued uh, to get together every Thanksgiving for for Thanksgiving dinner, uh, but they would also frequently go out on double dates um, and just hang out. Uh, one of the things that they uh, that uh, Miss Dench said was that even though uh, there's a significant age difference, it doesn't feel that way uh, because you know we're we're just. Um, uh, we're able to connect and talk. And, um, and what Lonnie says, excuse me, what Jamal says is that, uh, that, that, that Lonnie and Wanda Dench have become some of his best friends. Um, and I want to read um, a direct quote from him. Uh, he says, um, he says, uh, hold on, let me see. Um, he says, um, he says, there's nothing. He says, whenever we meet, we, we spend four or five hours just talking and talking. It's never awkward. Uh, they became two close best friends to me. There's nothing about her that is mean or uncaring. It feels like I've told her my whole life story, and she always listens and shares her own story. She's just the most loving person. She's pretty much perfect. And I, and I was moved by that story when I first uh, heard it uh, four years ago. Here it is. You had this uh, this black kid, this this uh, younger black kid, older uh, white couple, and um, and across uh, race, uh, gender, uh, generations, they formed this accidental friendship because they both were open to what what whatever the universe or whatever God was would, would send their way in that regard, and they and they became very 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 good friends. Now fast forward to this year, uh, unfortunately, uh, back in April, uh, Mrs. Dench's husband of 43 years, Lonnie, passed away due to uh, complications from COVID. Um, but even with Lonnie's passing, uh, Jamal and, um, and Mrs. Dench, uh, Jamal and Wanda, um, 
still uh, got together. They got together a little bit early um, this year, but they still got together. And um, and and she mentions uh, that even though she was reluctant to, uh, she did, and she was uh, you know a little. Uh, um, reluctant this year just because of the grief. Grief is still fresh, but glad that she did uh, because of just uh, how therapeutic it was. I say all of that to say this, God has surrounded you with people that um, that will love you for who you are, um, that will come alongside you and listen to your story and walk with you through the deep seasons of your life. Uh, but I want to encourage you just to be open uh, to what God might be doing. Um, you say, well, pastor, I'm, you know, I'm not a very outgoing person. Uh, well, there are some things um, that, it, you know, uh, for us uh, to be able to have it. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. Um, Jesus says that that uh, if you seek, you'll find. If you knock, the door will be open. If you ask, it'll be given. There's some things in the kingdom that require some uh, some effort on our part. So I'm praying in this season, um, in this season, uh, that maybe you might reach out to someone. Maybe there's an opportunity for you to make a connection with someone um, by meeting a need. Uh, I mentioned some some folks on the list who might be particularly vulnerable to loneliness in this time. Uh, and maybe as I was reading that list, a name came to mind, a face came to mind. Um, maybe this is your season to reach out to someone, someone else who may be lonely. And maybe uh, maybe as you're ministering to their isolation, God will in turn minister to yours. But in all things, remember that God will never leave you nor forsake you. He is with you. And so allow him to lead you um, into those places of abundance. We love you. Uh, we thank God for you and um, and happy Thanksgiving.